How They Croaked by Georgia Bragg. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart had a golden ear and magic fingers. As a little kid, he'd hear a piece of music only once and be able to play it back perfectly. People paid through their noses to watch this young genius sit and play the pianoforte before his feet even reached the floor. So Mozart's father took him on a four-year concert tour to perform for the likes of Marie Antoinette and King George III, all before little Wolfie was even 10. Mozart plucked billions of notes out of countless instruments with those talented hands, and when he got sick, his fingers were the first to go. The boy wonder supported his family in grand style. They bought fancy clothes and a carriage with seven horses and moved to a better part of town. His father even charged admission to watch him practice. Mozart performed 24 seven, but the gigs dried up when Mozart grew into a gawky teen with a huge head. He still cried easily and always loved a good fart joke, but his cute money-making prodigy years were definitely over and his father was not amused. Mozart became the concert master of the Salzburg court and taught music to the children of nobility, but the pay was low. He moved to Vienna in his 20s, but Emperor Joseph didn't hire him. Mozart made money writing dance songs for the balls at court, but he really wanted to write sonatas, symphonies, and other music you had to listen to while sitting in a chair. Unfortunately, that kind of music wouldn't pay for his fancy lifestyle. Mozart worked hard and wrote everything fast without any crossouts or first drafts. His famous operas, The Magic Flute, the marriage of Figaro and Don Giovanni, to name a few. But he also partied hard, primped, and shopped till he dropped. Mozart married Constanez Weber. She came from a musical family, and she knew a man with ribbon when she saw one. They had six children, but only two survived to adulthood. When things got tough, he sold his wife's silver and jewels to make some cash. Mozart could keep a beat, but his forward-thinking, innovative music was out of sync with his own times, so he ended up a starving artist. Throughout his life, he would get a sore throat, and then his shoulders, hips, knees, and finger joints swelled up and hurt so badly he couldn't move. Nobody knew what it was. Blood-sucking slugs called leeches were used to suck out the so-called bad blood from his joints, which is what doctors of the time believed caused illness. The sore joint was shaved and pricked. The leech was kept in a cup until it latched onto the knee or the elbow, and then several hours later, after the leech was full of blood, it fell off. One day, an unknown messenger came with a request for Mozart to write a requiem, death song for a person whose identity the messenger didn't wish to disclose. The pay was good, so Mozart jumped at the commission. While Mozart worked on the requiem, he grew weaker and weaker. He began to get the creepy feeling that he was writing the requiem for himself. When Mozart's skin erupted in red pustules, he said, I'm being poisoned to death. The doctors diagnosed with severe military fever, which was a catch-all phrase for everything is falling apart. It was said to be caused by excessive passions and eating too many plums and cucumbers. Doctors smeared concoctions of warm turpentine, wax, powdered Spanish flies, and mustard on his body, which made his skin bubble up and blister. Not a pretty picture. Mozart's hands swelled up. His music-making fingers turned into 10 overstuffed sausages. That's when Mozart got into bed. Soon he began to vomit. His fever spiked and his rash got worse. His whole body ballooned and he was unable to sit up. 
He was slumped over in bed and his crippled fingers were too puffed to even hold a pen. But he hummed and tapped out the requiem while a musical assistant wrote down the notes for him. The stink of rotting human filled the apartment. When Mozart said, I can taste death in my mouth, someone ran to get the priest. But Mozart never wrote that much church music, so the priest wouldn't come over. They searched for the doctor and eventually found him at the theater, but he wouldn't leave until the performance was over. He knew Mozart could croak any minute, and he didn't want to be there when it happened. He did not want to be known as the doctor who failed to save one of the most brilliant human beings of all time. That could really kill a medical career. After taking the long way, the doctor finally arrived. He put a cold water and vinegar compress on Mozart's forehead. Mozart shivered, then vomited across the room. Two hours later, he was dead. Mozart was right in a way. He was writing the requiem for himself. Constanez jumped into Mozart's bed to catch what he had so she could die with him. It didn't work. He had been sick for only 15 days. Even in death, he was quick. Mozart's final illness had started with streptococcal, strep infection in his throat that migrated into blood and joints, ultimately leading to kidney failure. He didn't finish the requiem and he didn't get to finish life as an old man either. Mozart died on December 5th, 1791 in Vienna, Austria. He was only 35 years old. They didn't do an autopsy because his corpse was too smelly. The skin was soft and squishy, not stiff like that of a normal dead person. After a small gathering at a cathedral, a horse and a cart picked up Mozart's coffin and clopped three miles to St. Mark's Cemetery. Nobody went with it because attending the burial wasn't custom of that time. Mozart's body was taken out of the reusable coffin, sewn into a body bag, and covered with quicklime to make it decompose faster. He was buried that night or the next morning, depending on when the five or six other unluckily stiffs were on hand to open up the common grave alongside Mozart. They, there was no headstone marking the grave because the emperor forbade them, and that was that. Unless you were royalty or super rich, the law required sack burials as they were cheaper and cleaner. So most people were buried this way. Constantine's didn't go to Mozart's grave for 17 years. Again, people didn't do that back then. When she eventually went there, she couldn't find the grave because the person who buried Mozart was dead. And anyway, every seven years, the decomposed bodies in common graves were cleaned out and raked over to prepare for more burials. Today, strep throat can be cured by taking antibiotics. Unfortunately, Mozart died 140 years before antibiotics were invented.